the Ministry of Home Affairs has approved a relief package of Rs 44.8 crore for the flood-ravaged northeast state of Sikkim. The ad will be released as an advance amount from the central share of the State Disaster Response Fund SDRF, to Sikkim. Moreover, the center has also constituted an inter-ministerial central team IMCT, to make an assessment of the damages caused by the lag bus induced floods. Based on the IMCT assessment, additional central assistance from the National Disaster Response Fund will be approved for Sikkim, a statement from the Ministry of Home Affairs stated. Meanwhile, that toll in Sikkim due to flash flood has risen to 40. The additional district magistrate ADM of Siva Saga Assam has announced the imposition of a night curfew in a 5 km belt on the Assam side of Siva Saga district, which shares a border with Naglin. The night curfew will be in effect from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. starting from September 7, 2023 and will remain in place for a duration of 60 days. The decision to enforce the night curfew has been taken as a precautionary measure to deter anti-social elements, extremists and unlawful activities from crossing the assam Naglin border with the Sivasaga district. According to the order issued by ADM Sivasaka during the period of the night curfew, the movement of magistrates, security personnel from the Army, CRPF, Central Reserve Police Force and police as well as civil officials who are deployed on duty are exempted from the purview of the prohibitory order. The United Nations Human Rights has raised concerns over the vandalization of activist Baplo Loy Tongbam's residence in Manipur. What is more is that the United Nations Human Rights squarely blamed local outfits Metia Lupun and Arambai Tangle behind the incident. Taking to X, formerly known as Twitter, the UN Human Rights stated, We are alarmed by threats to human rights defender Bablo Loitong Bam by Metia Lipum and Arambai Tangle groups in Manipur for speaking out on intercommunal violence since May. We urge authorities to protect him, his family and home and hold perpetrators accountable. The Kasi Author Society KAS has submitted a memorandum to the President, the Prime Minister and the Union Home Minister in a bid to strengthen their demand for the inclusion of the Kasi language in the eighth schedule. The resolutions were submitted to the President, the PMO and the Union Home Ministry after organizing the National Seminar on Kasi Literature and Culture in New Delhi on September 29. KAS President D.R.L. Nonglight said after the conclusion of the seminar, the organization adopted four pivotal resolutions to press demands for the inclusion of the Kasi language under the eighth schedule of the constitution. The All Borough Students' Union today staged a protest in the premises of the Boroughland University in Kokrachar while demanding for the removal of Vice Chancellor Dr. Laishram Ladu Singh. The ABSU is seeking the removal of Dr. Singh as the Boroughland University VC after he was arrested on corruption charges by the Directorate of Vigilance and Anti-Corruption and the Chief Minister of Vigilance Cell. The protesting students also slammed the members of the inquiry committee set up by the Governor of Assam. <laughs> Nationalist Congress Party NCP Chief Sharad Pawar today met Congress President Malikarjun Kage and Party Leader Rahul Gandhi. Power, along with party MLA Jitendra Ahwat, arrived at the residence of Kage at 10, Rajaji Mark in Central Delhi at 2 p.m. And the meeting between the senior leaders lasted for over 30 minutes. In a post on X, formerly Twitter, Kage said today, along with Rahul Gandhiji, met NCP President Sharad Pawarji to further raise the voice of the people of the country. We are ready for every challenge. India will join. India will win. India men's Kabati team trashed down Pakistan 61-14 in the semi-final to enter the finals of the event today. After Pakistan's strong start, India rebounded quickly and were in control for the rest of the tie. Pakistan got all out for a total of four times in the match as India arrested control. Earlier, the Indian men's Kabadi team shocked us tremendous determination, first outplaying Chinese Taipei 50-27 and thereafter defeating Japan 56-30 to set up a semi-final clash against Pakistan. In the final schedule to happen tomorrow, India will face the winner of other semi-final between Iran and Chinese Taipei. <laughs>